This is Changemakers with Katie Gore, finding the right solutions for the affordable housing community. This week's Changemaker is Bajoy Narana, the CEO, Chief Product Architect, and founder of Bob.ai, where they leverage AI to automate cumbersome processes, share information, and improve outcomes for low-income families seeking affordable housing. With his unique background in technology and business transformation, Bajoy leads the product vision focused on building long-term solutions for the affordable housing ecosystem. Bajoy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Katie. We have several things I want to talk about, but what inspired you to start what is now known as Bob.ai? I was working for IBM. I, I worked in technology all my professional career. And then I was I started a company that was doing professional consulting services, um, basically implementing Watson AI services for any company. We had no industry, uh, we had no industry focus. Then I was sending out emails to everybody in Dallas trying to drum up business, like all the CEOs, decision makers of companies in, in Dallas. Uh, by happenstance, I sent it to the Dallas Housing Authority CEO too. Then we also contacted him, him through a mutual contact who was who knew both of us. So we had a lunch meeting and then uh, he explained the problems that the housing authority was facing. It so happened that the the one particular problem about inspections that they were that they were facing at the time, uh, initial inspections were getting delayed by about six weeks. That meant uh, that the um, landlords had to hold the apartment for six weeks and they were losing rent. And there was, uh, I think some newspapers had done about it and all that. So he was really interested in getting it fixed. And then that is an area that I had uh, previous experience, you know, optimizing work orders. And so I understood the problem fairly quickly. And then they gave us a small contract to work on it. And then we worked on it and we fixed it in about four weeks. So that was very well received. Uh, Dallas uh, Observer, I think, uh, wrote about it. American Indian wrote about it. So we got into the industry. I didn't know much about housing authorities or the software that housing authorities were using or anything. I assumed that oh, we would make an inspection product and then there would be APIs to connect to all the existing softwares and we could sell it and things like that. None of that turned out to be true. So... <laughs> It was a misunderstanding that got us in. Then one thing led to another. And then I realized that there is a very large gap in software. Like hey, this is one of those places where there isn't really internet software that customers are using, you know, post-internet kind of software. Uh, so everything was done on paper. And essentially, uh, that was how it was working. Like, uh, clients and landlords were not using anything. I realized that we could create something big in the sense uh, there is a marketplace that can be created, you know, like we can pull all the landlords in the country and all the applicants' clients. So the opportunity was really big, but also it was difficult to do. So that's why nobody has done it. And then we stayed, start, start building RFTA and app contracts and all that after that. And then one thing led to another relocations. Right now we have a complete ERP package, um, like, Everything. If you if you do the if you have the process, then we have software to support it and that that sort of thing. So it was not a thought out day. I want to work on this industry and kind a of thing. So it, we got it was more opportunistic. We got an opportunity, turned out to be good, and then we developed some expertise in the industry, and then stayed. It sounds like you're trying to hit some of those common pain points in the affordable housing industry, and Bob.ai is helping address those. You mentioned. You know, requests for tenancy approvals, you mentioned HAP contracts and inspections. Are you starting to see some of those processing times or what are the efficiency gains that you're seeing? Katie, we came to the, like I, I told you, right, I, I was in the, I came to, I started the company uh, trying to take AI services to the market, a general purpose AI consulting company. So this was 2017. So AI was not prime time, but Watson was a big thing in IBM, so I was I was very well versed in what Watson could do, and uh, in, from a business sense and so on. So that was the essential idea: we would bring uh, AI services to the market, but we wouldn't build just AI services and integrate it to the existing applications of housing authorities because they don't have APIs. None of them have any application programming interfaces that we can just use. So. In the five years that we have been in, so we built both software 
and autonomous AI agents for doing the work. So the efficiency gains are twofold, right? One is that you have software to do, you know, switching from paper to software. On top of it, we have autonomous AI agents. For example, when an RFT is submitted, it goes to 38 steps like, oh, does the voucher exist? And, you know, is this W9 really the W9 of the owner? If it's a property manager, does he have a management agreement? Things like that. All of that can be done by AI. So 2023 happened to be the breakout year for AI. So all of that can be done by AI, which basically means when you're submitting the RFTA, it's approved in real time. Wow. And in such competitive markets where people need to move quickly to keep their unit, this is a huge uh, differential moment for these housing authorities. You know, what type of automation um, for non-tech people explain the type of automation that's happening to provide some of these efficient workflows. So what is the actual person doing to be able to process that request for tenancy approval in the same day or in live real time? Whatever I'm explaining would apply to applications, recertifications, relocations, et cetera, but let's stay on that key example. It's a good okay. one. So when a person is going to a um, website and then that is a housing provider, a landlord, an owner, a property manager, so he goes to the website and he creates an account and then he's filling in a form, essentially giving the details of his unit. What is, how many bedrooms, what is the structure type, what is the utilities, and what are the amenities and so on. So that's all required by the PHA. And then uh, we do an affordability check in real time. We are basically doing the 30-40 rule. Oh, if this, uh, this is the voucher holder and this is their income and this is the rent and utilities. So are they going to be able to afford it? Will they end up paying more than 40% of their income towards rent and utilities? That's the that's question there. So that's done in real time. And the reasonableness check is also done in real time. So if the landlord is asking for, let's say, $3,000, we come back and say that, no, the maximum rent that can be contracted is $2,700. So that is taken care of in real time. That's not AI. That's just classical software. And then comes the AI piece, um, that is, uh, the landlord is required to attach several documents. That's just the process of it. HUD wants to ensure that person who is signing the contract is actually the owner of this unit. So ownership documents, W-9, and if it's a property manager, the management agreement, and so on. All of that is read by AI, just like a case manager would read it. It's essentially saying, oh, this is a management agreement, 10 pages. Does it actually allow the owner to, to rent it? Um, and, and can he rent this specific property? These are the questions that a case manager is trying to do. And we train AI exactly the same way. And then it documents all its results. Oh, I, do, I, yeah, I, can, I can accept this management agreement for these reasons uh, because this property manager is allowed to um, collect rent and uh, you know, contract it. And so on. So it summarizes the proper, the management agreement, writes everything down. Like the perfect case manager, you could say the top 1%, then the RFTA can be approved in real time. How does your platform connect and share information with the different stakeholders, you know, the landlords or the applicants um, or even people existing on the program? How does, is there a, through a portal or how is that connection happening? So it's just one app, one product that everybody's seeing that uh, the landlord is logging in and creating this application. And then he's inviting the client to sign because the client signature is needed. And they're logging into the same website. Very similar to Airbnb, you know, like you are trying to rent a unit, the renter and the homeowner are both logging into the same application. I mean, the portal is an old, I mean, there you need a portal if you need to separate the application from 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 the internet, some something. But we have one application for everything. Everybody logs in with the same same ID, and then they can the, the for the housing provider, they can transact with any PHA on our network. Wow! So, so they create one account and they can transact with anyone. And the same thing with the applicant, they create one account and they can apply. And and most importantly, the clients and applicants can apply to about thirty four thousand properties. Wow, that's a lot. That's very efficient. Like the college applications, that's one way people understand it easily. You create the application once, and then you can send it to any property. So when you first got started, did you do a test group, 
or did you go full live? Uh, you mentioned the Dallas Housing Authority. How did you start with your implementation there? Without Dallas Housing Authority, it was also our home housing authority. This would not have happened, the whole thing. We would not have even gotten into it or we would not have been. So they had real business needs. We were solving those business needs without really thinking about, hey, what are we going to do? What is the product's roadmap or anything like that? And, when we, uh, we, and, and as I told you, our, our, at least my I made the mistake and I thought, okay, oh, I would just make these services and then I would connect it to whatever application they're using. What is a big deal? That's how I, I was trained and that's how I thought about it. But that didn't work. So we couldn't connect. So then we ended up building the next one. We ended up building the next one. And then, then that created the roadmap for us. So I, we cannot really claim credit for any of that. It was mostly happenstance and, you know. So what does success look like for Bob.ai over the next three to five years in terms of impact to your users? If an applicant can uh, come in and apply uh, and then apply to a large number of uh, assistance providers, multiple PhDs using the same applications form, and if they can be kept uh, up to date, okay, this is your position in the wait list, and, uh, and, and that, the stress and strain of that process removed, like, like when the common college application came into being, uh, the same exact thing, it was nothing, I mean, we can't really even say that it's very innovative you know it's at least 20 years late so uh, doing that and then after uh, and most importantly while they're waiting and when they get the voucher they can apply to a very large number and if that pool is actually exhaustive like it's every proper affordable property manager who would accept a voucher in the city that would be great now, every light tech unit every PV unit everyone who would accept it that that would be amazing because then then they can create one application and send it to multiple places and if the property managers can easily understand what is their share of the rent and what is what the risk, and they can they can appreciate the value of a voucher holder in terms of being a long term renter, no rent collection risk, and things like that, that would be success for us. In if you are asking three years, that would be success. If you are asking ten years, like you no, know, if there is um, more people can move to home ownership, uh, build their credit, uh, and that sort of thing, that that would be. Amazing success for us. What future capabilities do you envision for making this platform available at such a larger scale? You mentioned 34,000 units. Uh, what other capabilities do you think you're going to, you know, where you're going to launch or how you're going to access some of this market? We came to the market. I mean, I was working with IBM and I only started the company because I knew that AI was going to be the key differentiator. Uh, this is how I mean I thought about it. Hey, when when the dot com started, you know, when that was that was a point of departure, right? I mean everything changed at that point. And and at that time I was too young and I was I was I was not able to start something. So I, I could see that hey, if you if you have an idea, you could do a lot of things. But that and then I didn't want to, the same thing to happen when the AI became the next uh, singularity. You know, like it's changing everything. Um, so I was. I mean, you could say that we started too early. You know, even when the AI services were not really ready for prime time, we started the company. I, we don't regret it. You know, like it really helped us prepare the software and prepare the network and all that. So deploying AI services on the platform is our single most important priority. And that's going to be the biggest differentiator. If you think about public housing authorities and this industry in general, uh, think about it. Like, to be a case manager and a good case manager, you are typically coming up, uh, you, are, you are a person with a MSW degree and you didn't actually sign up to read all these documents and do this paperwork. You signed up because you wanted to really talk to people, you really want to intervene in people's lives in meaningful, meaningful ways and things like that. But what you end up doing is, and you know, I, you know what you end up doing, you are actually pushing paper. So yep. this is one industry when AI is going to have pluses and minuses everywhere. I'm not saying that it's going to be all positive, but this is going to be one industry where the positives are going to far outweigh the negatives. One reason because you still have 10, 15 percent of people that, that, that you really need to focus on. Um, Eight-year-olds that they can't really interact on the internet at all and you need to talk to them. You can even drive to them and talk to them because if you have bandwidth to do that. So that that kind of reconfiguring of what would happen everywhere 
and then I think uh, I think we don't want housing authorities to be um, getting the technology as the last ones. Like one, like a real good friend of mine, the chief operating officer in um, Dallas Housing Authority, David Sapsodi once explained to me, "Hey, we get all these technologies, but we get it at the very end. In this cycle, we don't want it to be like that." You know, we want it to be uh, the the real bleeding edge of technology. We 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 think we can take it to the housing authorities and affordable housing market in general, and that would be well received uh, because uh, there is a severe problem in hiring, as you know. Uh, it's very difficult to hire. So, and also one case manager has nine hundred clients. So, which other industry has it like that? So, there is no question of people losing jobs or anything like that. So we would be massively increasing capability, service levels. So application is, uh, the moment you decide, you know, like uh, 200 vouchers can be issued, software would ask for full application to be submitted. When full application is submitted, evaluate everything and issue the voucher in real time. That's really impressive. And I want to get more into the work you're doing, but we have to take a break here. Next time on Changemakers, but Joy shares how Bob.ai will scale to impact more housing authorities across the country. I don't see scaling as a problem, problem because at the moment we don't have any competition. So it's a question of just making everything work and then people would want it. Thanks for listening to Changemakers with Katie Gore. To find out more about Katie, go to quadl.com. That's Q U. A-D-E-L dot com. This has been a production of Forbes Books Radio.